Okay, good evening. I think those who are sitting way in the back, um, <laughs> it might be kind of hard to see. You might want to come a little more even in the middle. No, you don't want to? <laughs> the front row is open, <laughs> they're saying. Okay, um, hi. So, um, I'd like to begin by saying 10 times number two um, to dedicate to the past, since it's the uh, 120th uh, anniversary, celebrating the first missionary uh, ministers who came from Japan, um, to dedicate 10 times number two to the first pioneering ministers, to all the other ministers who have gone um, after this, because the new Otsutome book would not have been possible without the efforts of many, many people. And the efforts, really the great efforts of um, Reverend Nakamura, who was here, who, who he basically put together this Otsutome book. This is really a groundbreaking book. Um, so I'd like to dedicate 10 times number two to all those ministers, members, and friends of um, Jodo Mission. Nyodai daiji daihi ai mingo nen do shoju nen Namu Amida Mu Namu Amida Mu Namu Amida Mu Namu Amida Namu Amida Mu Namu Amida Mu Namu Amida Mu Namu Amida Mu Namu Okay. So, um, I'd like to begin by um, explaining a little bit about the Otsutome book. For some of the Maui people, you've heard some of this already, so please bear with me and please be patient. Um, the title Otsutome, actually, the title Otsutome, for a lot of people who know some Japanese, Otsutome sounds like work, right? Stomeru means to work. Well, in this case, Otsutome comes from the meaning of practice. So it doesn't mean to work, but it actually um, means a sacred book of worship or it, um, daily devotional practice. So in Japanese, it's nichi jo gongyo, nichi jo gongyo, which means nichi jo is daily and gongyo is practice. So gon is actually the word for otsutome. That's where the character otsutome comes from. So it's a daily devotional service book. And for the 2011 uh, Memorial of Honen Shonin, the 800th Grand Memorial, uh, I was commissioned by Jodoshu in Hawaii to come up with a new Otsutome book. And actually, it, it took four years for, for me to um, fin finally produce the book. Because for about two years, I, I kind of was a little depressed. I felt like, how can I... How can I break this form? You know, how can I change this? Because this is the classic, right? And this is what everybody has loved for so many years. But, so it was really, really hard to actually sort of come to terms with having to part with the book, but also having to, having to redo the book. But when I actually sat down to look at some of the word, wording, um, the translation is based on something that was current 30 years ago. So that's not current today. The language in Buddhism, for example, in academic, academic Buddhism in the US and in Europe, in English, it's really, really progressed a lot. And the book here is based more on um, more kind of, not Christian, but you know, the translation because they didn't know any better, and, and they were using the current things of that time, 
it, it comes out to be a little bit, um, for example, sang gege is, um, is the, the verse for confession. Confession, in Buddhism we don't really confess. We're not, we're not asking for forgiveness of our sins. We are, we're already sinful beings, so we're not asking for forgiveness of it. We're reflecting on ourselves, right? Sangege is not a confession. It's a time to repent. It's a time to, in front of the Buddha, to think about all the you know bad things that you did. Because usually we don't want to confront the bad things we did. So those are you know there are many many words like that that come across in the old book that are not really um, current anymore and not really um, it's not real like Buddhist thinking. It's actually more based on. Um, uh, Christian thinking. So those are things that I, I really changed in the book. I also changed the uh, spelling of Nembutsu. So before, uh, actually, and also I left, <laughs> now I'm thinking maybe I shouldn't have left it, but for the song, the Nembutsu, I put M, Nembutsu. That's because in Japanese, the Nen, M, is actually, it's a soft N. It's kind of somewhere between N and M. So I think in the past, they put nem butsu, M. However, um, recently, there are Pure Land scholars who say, well, nem doesn't really mean anything. It's nen, right? Nen is the meaning. So nen butsu, it has to be N. <laughs> um, I don't, you know, I, I still look at nem butsu and it has, it's soft and fuzzy for me, you know, and so it gives me a warm feeling inside. but. Uh, I wanted to change it and be more current. So that was something that I, I changed in the, uh, in the new book. So I also wanted, uh, I also did it in a format so that the English and the Japanese were together on each page so everybody can uh, follow, right, what we're reading and understand. Because in the, in the past, In the past, we have the reading at the top and the meaning at the bottom. But how many of us have really kind of stopped to look at the bottom? Right? Not many people look at the bottom because we're too busy trying to read the top. So I thought if it's in your face, <laughs> then you're going to have to, uh, you know, you, um, I hope that you stop to be aware because I um, actually did it more of a direct translation so that you can think about the meaning and uh, Reverend Nakamura's English is really wonderful. I mean, this is so hard to break this apart and to come up with a new translation because, you know, he put so much loving thought into it. So. I hope that the temples who still have this book will keep this book and you know read the English sometimes you know read it together and think about what it says and, and look at look at the differences between the new book and the old book. If you look at the differences between the new book and the old book, I think you can co come to appreciate this book a lot more too, because this still has a lot of value in it. So I don't want people to just say, oh, you know, we now have a new book, but to go back and also look at the old book because I think you'll also find some of why you can see, understand why I had to change some of the changes, make some of those changes too. Because um, a lot of it, I feel like uh, he kind of interprets everything for you, so it helps you understand some of the ideas. Um, but mine may not give you all the answers. It, it's going to lead you to more questions, but I think one of one of the important things in religion is that you have these questions, right? It's not just the answers. So in Buddhism, Buddhism just doesn't give you the answers. The Buddha is not here to make things, everything better for you. You have to make it better for yourself. But the Buddha is there to help you, you know, achieve a better you, right? So. So the Otsutome book.
Um, I'd like to start with explaining what Jodoshu Otsutome, um, it's kind of like a formula, it's like a book. Um, there's a beginning, there's the middle, so there's the highlight part, and then there's the conclusion. The beginning part is this part. So in the beginning, it's like hosting a party. Right? Koge, what do you do when you first host a party? If you're hosting a party at your house, what is the first thing you do? Clean the house. Oh, what was it? You invite people? Yeah, okay, that, that, you, you do invite people, definitely. So, um, but you, you first you're gonna clean your house. So, in Koge, the purification verse, um, you're, you're cleaning your body and you're cleaning the space. You're purifying the space. You're cleaning your mind. So you're beginning to prepare yourself to receive the teachings. And then we do Samborai, right? The Samborai on page 13, the veneration to the three treasures. Rai, rai means to bow. Rai means to bow, uh, or it can, um, it's basically in um, India, it's uh, a full prostration, which means you're touching your two arms, your knees, and your forehead, right? So the five points of your body, your forehead, your, t your arms, and your knees down to the ground, and you're doing a full prostration. So you're, 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 do you're sending the invite, right? <laughs> Then next we have Bujo. This is the actual invitation. This is saying, please, this is on page 14, welcoming the Buddhas. And San Bujo here, the Bujo, actually there's Shi Bujo and San Bujo. I think usually the senseis read San Bujo in the temples. Um, but on, actually, I'm sorry, I made a mistake on the pages here. I put 40. 43 and 44, but I think it's on 31 and 32. If you go to page, in the appendix, to page 30, sorry, not appendix, in the Selected Sutras, page 31, there's Shibujo. She means four. So, Bujo is, is the welcoming of the Buddhas, and so it's either Sambujo in three verses, or Shibujo in four verses. Shibujo is usually a little longer, so the senseis will do it like maybe during the bond dance and um, for special services like funeral. And the way they uh, chant it, sometimes they do it more like a music. John, do you want to demonstrate? <laughs> Thank you, John. So, so that's that's Shibujo d done in like a musical style. So after we do the welcoming, then we do Sangege. This is what I was er explaining earlier. This is on page 15, the repentance. So Ge means uh, verse. So this verse of repentance. I think this is really uh, important because it's saying that all these things that I've done is derived from my greed, anger, and delusion. These are really important Buddhist thoughts, not just in, in Pure Land Buddhism, but in general. They're, they're the three poisons of Buddhism, greed, anger, and delusion. 
right? I think everybody becomes angry. Everybody becomes greedy. We all become delusional. Um, and these things are born out of my conduct, my words, and my thoughts. This is also based on the, you know, when you read the Eightfold Path, right? What you, your conduct, your words, and your thoughts. So now I repent them all, right? I now repent them all. So Isai, Isai is all Gakon Kai Sange. I'm repenting them all. So it's a time, so now you're preparing your mind, right? To receive the teachings, to also look, reflect upon your own self. So this is, when, you, when you're chanting these things, you know, I hope you're reflecting upon some of these things, right? Um, and taking that moment. I recently gave a talk on the Otsutome book at uh, Honganji Temple in San Mateo on the mainland. And the uh, sensei there was, was saying, wow, you know, your, your chanting is quite long. So, but that's so nice, you know, and, and some of the other members were saying that, that they, you know, really um, like, they were very interested in, in our chanting style because they take one selection and then they chant it and then that's it. But we do sort of the whole, this first part, right, the preface, Jobun, um, and then we do the main part and then we do sort of a closing. So each section is kind of demarcated with Junen at the end, right? Ten times Nembutsu, Junen. So on page 16, I put, um, I just put a very short explanation of what Namu Amidabutsu means, right? Often we're like namanda, namanda. We we're not really thinking about what we're saying. We just sort of in automatic mode. But it's really you know uh, you're calling upon the Buddha, and Honen Shonin teaches us that when you call upon the Buddha, the Buddha is always watching over us, right? So that's something to remember. To have that um, attitude is that the Buddha is always watching over us. You know whether we're doing good things or whether we're doing bad things. Um, but of course, ultimately, you know, we're doing these things um, of our own accord. So the next section is is called shojubun. Shojubun. This means the sort of essential part. It's the main part, the essential or the main part. And we start with on page seventeen, kaikyoge. So this is the opening verse for sutra chanting, Kai Kyoge. This is the part that goes Mujo Jin Jin Mimyoho. The reason why I wanted the kanji here, even though you know um, you might not know the kanji, is that maybe if your children or your grandchildren start you know studying some Japanese and they recognize a few characters in here. And hopefully they might take a little more interest in Buddhism and in, in their culture or their heritage. So this part is, I, I really, this is one of my favorite parts because it's saying that it's very, very difficult to, you know, uh, it's very, very difficult to encounter Buddhism, right? It's a really profound teaching and even after hundreds and thousands and millions of eons, so thousands and, you know, trillions and trillions of years, it's something that's difficult to encounter. And now we are, you know, we now we hear, receive, and uphold it. I think um, this is really a beautiful passage because often we take for granted what, you know, what we have, what we receive, but um, it's very um, it's very important to to kind of have the awareness. Part of Buddhism is having awareness, right? 
So it's not just going on auto mode when you come into the temple, but having that kind of awareness when you're reading or consciousness when you're reading the sutras or when you're reading the otsutome, right? So now we have, um, after Kai Kyoge, we have the Okyo. The Okyo o is honorific and Kyo is sutra. So Japanese like to make everything like sama, right? Sama, something important. O is for, sorry, I made a mistake. There's no, it's just Okyo, not O Okyo. Um, so Okyo is the sutra section. And in our temples here, we usually read Shisege. Shisege is, um, is the Gagon Cho Seigan, right? However, I just wanted, um, in the selected sutras, there's a few more sutras that, that are read in Jodoshu. So page 53, We have, oh sorry, not 53, 33. Page 33, we have Tambutsuju. Tambutsuju and Shisege are actually from the same sutra. And then we also have, on page 42, we have Shinjin Ganmon. Page 42, Shinjin Gamu. So, this is where things get a little complicated, the sutra sections. So, um, just uh, put your seat belts on. <laughs> um, so, Hon and Shonin, Hon and Shonin was the first teacher, the first teacher, Pureland teacher, to define this in Japan to define this practice of Nembutsu. So, Nembutsu practice, chanting Nembutsu, was around in Japan and also in China, but it was a one just one practice amongst many many practice practices. And Honen Shoni selects these three sutras, this Muryo Jukyo, Kan Muryo Jukyo, and Amida Kyo. The Muryo Jukyo is very, very long. And the Shisei that we chant in the temple is just one part of the Muryo Jukyo. On page, uh, this is Roman numeral six at the bottom. On our Jodoshu, on page six at the bottom in Roman numeral is the th three Pure Land Sutras. So Muryo Jukyo is the Sutra of the Buddha of Immeasurable Light. So Muryo means immeasurable or infinite. Muryo. Ju is light. And there's there's no Butsu, no Buddha in there, but it's it's kind of um this is a short um, shorter version of Muryo Jubutsu Kyo. So Muryo Jukyo means the sutra of the Buddha of immeasurable light. Then number two is Kam Muryo Jukyo, which is the sutra of the visualization of the Buddha of immeasurable life. So Kan means visualization. I think in Honganji, there's, um, con they say contemplation or meditation sutra. So instead of visualizing the Buddha, 
there, uh, there's words such as contemplation or meditation. And then last of it, last is Amida Kyo, or the Amida Sutra. So Amida Sutra is quite short. So sometimes we can, uh, in, in some sects, or sometimes in Jodoshu also, we read all of um, Amida Kyo, but uh, Muryo Jukyo, Jukyo and Kamuryo Jukyo are quite long, and Muryo Jukyo is very, very long, so usually we just read it in sections. Um, the Muryo Jukyo, the Sutra of the Buddha of uh, Immeasurable Life, explains about the uh, theories of Amida's salvation. And in it, um, in this, it's a all the sutras are kind of like a story. The story is before Amida Buddha becomes the Buddha, he's a bodhisattva named Dharmakara or Hozo Bosatsu. And Dharmakara basically vows Honganji, Hongan is the original vow, right? So, Jodoshu and Honganji have a lot of similar teachings because Shinan Shonin, the founder of Shin, uh, Jodo Shinshu, or Honganji, was Honen Shonin's, our teacher's disciple. So basically, Honganji has very similar, you know, they, they also um, say Namu Amida Butsu. Um, so, this is about the Amida's vows, saying that he promises to save everybody, right? If you call upon Amida's name, Amida will come and save you. Um, the second one, Kamuryo Jukyo, is basically showing us how to contemplate or how to visualize the Pure Land. It shows us what a beautiful place it is. And the altar is a representation of the Pure Land here, right? So in the Pure Land, there's beautiful mu musical instruments. So there's bells and beautiful sounds and everything is golden. And Amida Kyo, Amida Kyo is a sutra that describes the Amida Buddha and, and lists all his names. He has all these different names like Immeasurable Life, Buddha of Immeasurable Life, or Buddha of Infinite Light, right? So Buddha, Amida Buddha is the Buddha of life and light. So after we do the sutra reading, which we can you know select from different sutras, we have ekomon. Ekomon is actually we just we usually read Honzege on page twenty three. So that's the only one that um, I actually uh, I didn't put different verses. I only did the verse of Amida's original vow. And then next we have Junen. And I forgot to add, but on the bottom of page 23, we have Gohogo. Gohogo refers to Honen Shonin's writings and sayings. So today at Hamakua Jodo Mission, we read Ichimai Kishomon, right? Ichimai Kishomon is one of Honen Shonin's last and most important um, sayings. It's a one-sheet document in which he just reminds everybody, you know, to chant Namu Amida Butsu. Next we have Shoyakumon. Shoyakumon is really, really important in Jodoshu because it says that Amida Buddha is never going to abandon anyone. Anyone who calls his name, he receives and he's never going to abandon anybody. 
So even a bad person, right, can get received by Amida Buddha. And after we do Shoyakumon, we do Nembutsu Ichie. So we do continuous chanting of Nembutsu. Now, some, some teachers in Japan say that the main part of this essential section, right, this middle part, the main part, the highlight is Nembutsu. Not the Okyo, not the Sutra. It's the Nembutsu Ichie. Some teachers will say the Sutra is the main part, but some people say the Nembutsu Ichie is the part, main part. And then the next part is Egan, which I, um, this one I included in the old book, it was only included in Japanese, and um, I put selections of it in the English. It's on page 62. It's, it's usually read only by the priest. This section is only read by the priest. It's the part that, um, my Reverend John, And then we have Kaishak when we'll kata. Right? And then usually um, in between we do 10 times Nembusu. But sometimes, um, if it's a really long service, the sensei might say, Mata nenga wakuwa, and then go on to the next one. And then at the end, everybody says Junen together. But it's a part where you have the kaishaku, you have the wooden sticks, and you go kacha, and you know, and then everybody does Junen. So I try to translate some of the main ones in there. Sometimes when the priest is doing the, the minister is doing a dedication, then he uh, adds some extra ones with, you know, with people's names in it. And then, then there's so ekoge. This is, you're sharing the merit that you accumulated from saying nembutsu with everyone. And then nembutsu, uh, junen here. Next is Ruzubun. This is the conclusion. Um, Ruzubun actually means the section in which you're spreading the teachings. So this is a part where you say, I, now I've received the teachings and now um, I'm going to help in spreading the, the word of, of Buddhism. So this is your wish to promote Buddhism and their Sogange. Sorry, Sogange is on page 27. This comes from, this actually is a section from the Sutra, the Muryo Jukyo, or the Sutra on, on the Buddha of uh, Immeasurable Life. It basically says, no matter how many people there are, or how many beings there are, I earnestly vow to enlighten them all. Um, no, and no matter how, how deluded we are, I hope to extinguish all my delusions, right? So I hope to reach enlightened state. However in, uh, immeasurable the Buddha's teachings are, I vow to comprehend them all. So the Buddha's teachings are very vast. It's very, very, there's, it's just, it's innumerable. <laughs> um, so I hope to understand them all. And however incomparable enlightenment is, 
I earnestly vow to attain it by all means. So these are this is the word these are the words of Amida Buddha as the Bodhisattva who's promising to save everyone. But I put it as I, as me, because it's something I hope that each of us feel that we should try to aspire to as well. Um, then we have San Shodai. It's a section where you sing Namu Amida Bu Namu Amida Namu Amida um, Sometimes, actually, this San Shodai, I, not, now that I think about it, I wish I added uh, another section that, you, that sometimes the ministers read. Um, unfortunately, um, I, due to space, I, I didn't do that. But usually in, in, in the um, services, most of the ministers read this section. <laughs> but if your minister reads another section and you'd like that part translated, uh, please let me know because I'll be happy to provide that. Uh, then the last part is So Butsuge. So it's the end of the party and we're now say, thanking all our guests, or our honored guests, the Buddhas, you know, to say thank you for coming and joining us. Um, and now, you know, you're, you're sending them off. And lastly, you close with Ojune. So I was wondering um, if there are any questions. I, I, if, I think if I just keep on talking, I mean, I can keep on talking, but um, I, I know it's really hot and we just ate and um, <laughs> so. My, yes? Oh, so the question is if I added or changed some of the Gothas. Um, I added some Gothas that were in the older book, Light of Asia. I don't know if every, anybody remembers that book. It's, I think it was dated from, what is it, 1925 or something, or 1930 something. Yeah, so um, it was an old Sunday school book. It's all in English. And uh, Eleanor Miyake actually had a list of songs, Sunday school songs, that she wanted me to incorporate into the new book, so I incorporated that. And then there are two new songs, Inochi no Ryu, which thank you, Hilo members, for embracing Inochi no Ryu because um, that was kind of a hard, you know, sell. Um, my dad was saying it was too long and uh, too, you know, and, and then some of the other ministers are saying, oh, it's too complicated because it has a lot of, you know, <laughs> um, it's kind of a hard song. But I'm really uh, grateful that that you're. Um, you know, trying it out and you really like the song. And then there's a, a Goasan uh, in there, Hawaii Wasan. Yeah. Oh, Mr. Soma? That what you have described is a sequence that should be followed? Here? Yeah. It's the sequence that's that... That's a standard? It's a tr standard Jodoshu sequence. Okay. Yeah. I, I'm not saying I'm not saying that that's uh, that you have to necessarily follow that, but that's a traditional sequence in Jodo Shu. Shouldn't we, shouldn't we all all the temples in Hawaii do the same procedure? Um. Well, it's kind of a yes and no ans uh, answer. So the question is. It, um, if we, we should all do the same procedures. Um, I know that... No, huh? Years and years ago, like, um, uh, June Amasaki, Heizo, Fujimoto, and I, and maybe then, we used to have a Sunday school clinic here. Mm -hmm. And then we, the intent was to standardize this, the service procedure so wherever you go, you can follow the service and be comfortable. Yeah. Can I add to that? What you say is very, very true. In Japan, most of the temples hold true to this protocol. Because when we go to visit Joy Chirin or any other temple we meet, sister temple visits, especially Chirin, when they do the Itaikyo for the Mishin, 
is a standard procedure. We're at a loss because we don't practice it enough. We don't, we cannot remember this by heart. But when we go to the Japanese temples in Japan, the members who don't even have to read the service book, they can remember it just because they do it on a daily basis and puts us to shame. I mean, I, I went to Unjoji and they were doing this whole service for us and all of their active members don't even have to get any book rating. They're just sitting there going through the service and chanting along. You know, it, it, that's how it should be. Okay. The other question I have is offering of incense. Mm -hmm. Is there any specific time that the incense is being offered? Um, so the question is, is there any specific time when the incense is being offered? So uh, usually, uh, usually during the sutra chanting, um, sometimes during Nembusu Ichie, but usually I think it happens during Shisegen. So, if, if many people, the, we start the chanting, the Shisegen, but the, it is small group uh, during the Nembusu chanting. The, so what I'm trying to think in my mind is throughout all the German school, there should be a standard procedure that everybody should be practicing and wherever they go they feel comfortable. Yeah, I know where we're at now. And uh, offering the agents, it's same thing. Mm -hmm. that, that's usually when they offer the incense too. Um, but, um, I mean, ideally, ideally, we'd like to follow the traditional way, but, you know, I, I think it depends on the temple, it depends on the senseis. Um, so that's, um, it, it's, you know, what we can do ideally and what is the sort of uh, reality. Um, yeah. Did you have anything more to say, Mr. Solo, about that? I, I, okay. I, I what I thought okay. was, and you confirm that it is traditional, there is a set practice, and we should all... Actually, walk, since, walk, since, walk, since walk. yeah, since I've been given 90, um, this 90 minute time slot, I thought maybe part of it is we can do a little bit of chanting together, because I know for myself, that even though I grew up in a temple and I felt like I've chanted all my life, that when I went and did the training, I didn't really know it very well at all. So I think many of us, you know, are in the same boat where we, we kind of go on automatic mode and we kind of think we know it, but actually, you know, if somebody asks us questions about it, it's like, oh, I, you know, I'm not too sure. So I was hoping that maybe um, I, I kind of recruited my brother. <laughs> to help me with, with the sort of practice part of the chanting that we can do together. Yeah. So, but I, I don't want anybody to feel embarrassed by not knowing things because this is part of the learning process. I want people, part of this book, the way I, I made it is, again, so you ask more questions, right? It, I wanted to make it so that it's, you, people feel like they can ask questions about it. And not, I mean, and I don't want you to sort of feel embarrassed about what you don't know, or you know, or if you're not, you know, holding up to the standard. Um, that's why I, I think it was a good opportunity to give this talk today, because, you know, to sort of say this is the standard. This is not just I. I didn't make up something new. I'm actually following tradition. Um, I I followed. I mean, I I don't know if you if you know this about Reverend uh, former Bishop Nakamura. He trained in a tra uh, temple in Kyoto, and I, I actually was allowed to train a little bit, practice a little bit every morning there because I lived in the neighborhood. 
when I was doing my training. And he was really very, very dedicated to the traditional way of doing it. So his format in here is very traditional. And I followed the form, I followed that format. I didn't break from the traditional format, right? So I made a new book. It looks new, but it's, it's actually following the traditional format, right? So that, that's another thing that I wanted to let everybody here know that the, it, the English content is a little bit new, the words are new, but the, the actual, um, the sutras itself is the traditional Japanese uh, Jodoshu format. Yeah. And I think part of the reason why I put the English there too is we don't necessarily need to always follow exactly the same as Japan. You don't have to do the Japanese um, thing exactly the same. Like today, I really, uh, when Reverend uh, Ishikawa sort of stopped and said, page, you know, says, you know, soge or uh, uh, koge, page, whatever, and this page, whatever, you know, I think that was really, really good because it, it allowed people to sort of know where we are, right? Because sometimes it's easy to get lost. You're, you think you're following, and then you look, oh, where, where am I? I don't know where I am. I, and, and then you kind of, it's hard to fall, find where, you know, your place again. So I thought that was really, really a nice touch. Um, right, so, I mean, that's something that you can ask your sensei. Oh, could you announce the page, you know, so we can follow? Right? Any other questions? Yes? Um, there's no book in English that I know of that would give you the history of the Otsutome itself. Um, the Jodoshu uh, Research Institute uh, has a really nice website and they have some information about, um, about the sutras and some explanations. So if you Google Jodoshu Research Institute, um, they have all this information and they have a section on, uh, I don't remember if they called it daily prayer or um, they, call, I don't know if they use the word otsutome, but if you look around in it, um, you'll be able to find that they have some information about it. it um, there's a new book coming out by the Jodoshu Research Institute called the Three Pure Land Sutras. Actually, it's already out. You can buy it on Amazon. That explains about the history of the Three Pure Land Sutras that I was explaining earlier. So these three are translated into English and a brief sort of history about the sutras are explained in this book. And I think you can even get it as an e-book, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> I know uh, Honen Shonin Sen Chakshu, the, uh, his, his, um, the uh, selected collection by Honen Shonin, which is a really important book in, in Jodoshu, is available um, also as an e-book through Amazon. And if you're interested in that, that's the title is Sorry, Sen Chaku Hongan. I think I made it really difficult for people in the back to see, but Senchaku Hongan Nembutsu Shu.
if you look it up under the Japanese title, um, I don't remember the exact English title for that, but um, you can uh, read up on the history of Honen Shonin. Um, it, this is rather an, quite an academic book. So it, I, I think the three Pure Land Sutras may be a little easy, it may be a better sort of first step to get into. There are lots of also lots of books, you know, on um, on Buddhism in English. Um, that you know, it, it, Buddhism is very very vast. I mean, there are many as, as you know, there are many different kinds of Buddhism. There's Zen Buddhism. There's Honganji. It's like it gets kind of confusing. The essential teachings everybody looks at is the Eightfold Path, of course. And Bandara Tisarana, that the three refuges of Buddhism, right? The Buddha, the Dharma, the teachings, and the Sangha, the community, that's universal in Buddhism. So I think those are the most important things to know um, and, and not uh, get too overwhelmed by too many details. Although I gave you a lot of details tonight, I think. But, um, I'm always happy to answer any questions you have. Um, you can always email me if you want. I, I'll give you my email address. Just don't spam me, please. <laughs> Shindihara at gmail.com. What time do we have? Nine o'clock. Okay, so maybe I'll um, have my lovely assistant here, John Hara, Reverend John Hara, to come and help me. And uh, he usually does this at his his services. So I think we should. Um, oh, where are you? Oh, just to wake everyone up. Uh, everyone, please stand up. Okay. So we usually do exercises in our uh, uh, short exercises at our temple before our sermon, and uh, uh, usually have them sitting down. But um, because we've been sitting so long, I think we should just stand up and then just raise your arms high up, official, and then stretch for the sky, and then forward and open and close, and then rotate, and then rotate the other way, and then let's rotate our shoulders forward, nice and easy, slow and back, slow, nice and easy, kocha -cho kocha, -cho. and then rotate your legs around, and then the other way, and then let's stretch left, and right, and up, and down, and look forward, and big smiles, <laughs> and scrunch the face, and tongue out. Okay, very good. And then, so let's um, just relax our posture, bring your shoulders up, and just drop it, and up, and just drop, and relax. And then think about um, your one point, which is basically three inches below your belly button. And just think about breathing in your, breathing all the air right to that point, and then exhaling it out. So breathe in, and out. Breathe in, and out, and one more breath in, and out, okay, and then uh, uh, one more exercise uh, we do is uh, we do ha-ha exercises, and ha-ha exercises, exhaling out and going ha-ha-ha-ha. Ha, ha. Okay, so we'll do that. Ready? One, two, three, big hats. 
Okay, so please, if you want to uh, take a seat. And John. So we'll start with uh, Koge. If you can open the book to page uh, page twelve. Um, so in Japan, which we also do here, is we use the the bell and we use the fish drum. And actually, depending, uh, some of the bigger temples use two bells, like a really big bell and a smaller bell. Um, but generally in Hawaii, and then some of the temples for special occasions use this other, um, this little thing with a hanging called K. John, can you? So usually when you do Kai Kyoge, when you do the verse for opening the sutra, the main teacher, if there's more than one people, one priest, the main person called the doshi, the leader or the officiant, will hit that and and then do oh oh and then there's also can you lift up the whole thing? There's this uh in in Fusegane. Oh, sorry. Fusegane. And this is usually used for Nembutsu Ichie in Japan. So it's Nam Wam Nam Nam Wam Nam Nam Wam Nam Nam then there's this uh, kaishaku, the uh, the clappers. Can you lift it up so everybody can see it? This is called okigaishaku. So sometimes we have two clappers, two sticks of the same size. But this one, this style is when you do the ekomon. Uh, not uh, sorry, when you do the um, the betsu eko part. So when you do like bushu dai hingan no mi nabutsu hakken kyo, you do kacha. That's this, you use, so there's all these different kinds of utensils. Not all the temples have all the different utensils. I know in Lahaina we just have the bell and the fish, right? We don't have the K, and we don't have the, um, um, the Fusegane, this, or we don't have the Okigai Shaku, so. So what happens is the usually there's one priest in most temples and the one priest does everything. He's the efficient and he's also the sort of band leader. He does the musical instruments too. In in bigger temples in like the main temple there's a doshi like today you saw Bishop Hara, he was the Odoshi Sama, he's the um, officiant. And then there's the assistant, and Reverend Akia was doing the doing the different instruments, or the, the drum and the bell. So in, in an official situation like that, there's the main person, and then there's what you call Ina, who does the instruments. And the Ina usually does the first section, He does this part, 
up to here. So the first part, ganga shinjo nyokoro. That part actually only the ina, only the priest says it. So. And usually here, the priest rings the bell eight times. After this, when he goes boom, then everybody else joins in. So. The other day, I saw some people, some Hilo members, it, belting out Inochi no Ryu, you know. So you can belt out the um, this part from here. This is where you join in. So you know, loud voices. does three bells. He does a loud one, a soft one, medium one, and then a soft one. Sorry. Wait. Medium, soft, and loud. Right? So that kind of indicates that we're coming to the end of this section and now we're going on to the next section. And again, he's going to ring once and then he's going to say, Ishin kyo rai. Everybody else joins in. G O I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O J I O Sorry, Ishin Kyorai, this section is is one of the, um, uh, what is it, the non-standard ones because after the first ring, you, you say it, but at the next ring where he rings again softly, so Ishin Kyorai every time is only the priest saying it, and the rest of it, everybody else joins in, but he, he says only, um, everywhere else he'll say the first few characters and then everybody else joins in until the very end. But this section only, you say only the first part every time. Ishin Kyorai is the section that only the priest reads and everybody else reads the rest of it. Sorry, John, can you just hold on? So, again, he just rings once, and then he, the second time he rings, and everybody joins in, right? So from here on, that's the way. Um, so, okay, next, uh, page 15.
John. Oh. So this part, the Junin, usually in Japan, only the Odoshi sama, the only the officiant usually reads says na ten times nembutsu. But in Hawaii, I think it's nice, you know, for everybody to say it together. So you shouldn't feel shy to not um, to say it, to chant it along. But usually um, in Japan, it's traditional that only the the officiant reads it, and the way they read it is um, not. Sometimes you can do eight namu amidabutsu in a row if you're. Usually, young younger people can do it in eight eight without taking a breath. So it would be better for most people to do it in four. So namu amidabu, namu amidabu, namu amidabu, namu amidabu. Take a breath. Namu amidabu, namu amidabu, namu amidabu, namu amidabu. That's eight. Then. Namu Amidabu Tsu Namu Amidabu So only number nine is Namu Amidabu Tsu Right? So if you look at it here Only number nine is Namu Amidabu Tsu And in Japan um, Usually in Hawaii They just say Namu Amidabu Namu Amidabu Namu Amidabu And then they Namu Amidabu Tsu Namu Amidabu They kind of go off like that but in Japan, the uh, the the last uh, part they kind of inflect upwards. So they do namu amidabu, 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 tsu namu amidabu. Is if you hear it like that, that's the way the the efficient usually chants it um, but that's not the way that everybody else chants it with you because it's kind of a sort of more stylized way to do the nembutsu okay so page 17 So now we we're now we're in the essential part, right? And um, after this part, the minister changes from bell and then he changes to drum. So. Um, some temples, some ministers just say. She sang it, and then they start chanting without saying Bussetsu Muryo Jukyo. Bussetsu means the Buddha explains. The Buddha referring to Shakyamuni Buddha. Every sutra is said to have been explained or ex t taught by Shakyamuni Buddha, right? So even the Pure Land Sutras is said to have been Taught, taught by Shakyamuni Buddha. Um, so we say Bussetsu. The Buddha explains Muryo Jukyo. Muryo Jukyo is the one, the Pure Land, uh, the three Pure Land Sutras. It's the first Pure Land Sutra. So the Sutra of the Buddha of Immeasurable Life. I just found a mistake that I forgot to put of in, sorry, in there. Um, and Shiseige is the title of the section that we're about to read from the Sutra of Immeasurable, uh, the Buddha of Immeasurable Life.
Okay, so um, I'm gonna, re um, we won't do the whole thing um, just because of time, but this is an uh, important section because this is a section where Amida Buddha as the Bodhisattva Dharmakara is saying his vows. He actually has 48 vows, but this is one of the main parts uh, where he's promising to um, become a Buddha and and saying that I'm going to help everybody. And my, here, for example, on page 19 in the middle, when I reach the path of Buddha, of the Buddha, my name shall resound beyond the ten, ten directions. So he's saying that this is explaining why we need to call Namo Amidabhasa. <coughs> Um, also, I don't know if you noticed, in Jodoshu, if, if you notice the way John is hitting, Reverend John is hitting the uh, mokugyo, the wooden fish, the beat is not on the sound. So he's not doing... He, So, well, I'll just explain. It's basically offbeat. So, it's, um, he, she, mu, jo, no, she. Can you do that? So, it's off, it's off the, the, um, the, the beat, the sound. Yeah. Um, so that's that's also a very traditional way to um, to hit the the drum, and and I'm not very musically inclined, and it took me a long time to get it right. So okay. So next uh, we come towards. Can you do the last maybe from page 22, the last page? So up at the top of page 22. <laughs> down at the end and then John uh, Reverend John just rang the bell because we're now reading the next part so this, um, here we have, it says sho, uh, Shoyakumon, but actually in Japan, as we did today, there is there's Gohogo, so Gohogo is Honen Shonin Sings. And on the bottom of page 23, I have this little gohogo written. And I apologize, I made a mistake with the page numbers. Um, 
It's not page 64 to uh, 73. It actually starts on page 52. Um, and there's different selections of Gohogo. It goes to page 61. So I put Ichimai Kishomon, and then on page 56, there's Ishi Koshosoku, which is a little longer. Um, the reason why I didn't do this English and Japanese um, pay, uh, row by row is Japanese grammatical structure is a little different from English, whereas Chinese, so so far we've been reading Chinese characters. So the grammatical structure is in, is like English, subject, verb, object. So it's easy to do row by row. But Japanese is not subject, verb, object. So doing it row by row didn't work out as nicely. So I ended up putting the um, English part first and then followed by the Japanese part. Um, how many of you have heard of Ichimai Kishomon today? Like you heard today, everybody heard it today, but before today, how many of you have heard Ichimai Kishomon? Okay, oh good, oh wow, okay. So Ichimai Kishomon, um, is often read in Japan in, in the temples. Um, there's other sayings of Honen Shonin, there's shorter ones other than Ichimai Kishomon um, that sometimes gets replaced here, but usually it's some kind of saying by Honen Shonin and often um, it's Ichimai Kishomon. And this is, uh, we use the, this, um, the oki gaishaku or the kaishaku, the clappers. And um, if you want to follow, we'll do a little bit on page 56 and 4. So, can we just clapper? Well, we, we won't read the whole thing. We'll just do the clapper. John, can you just do the clappers? So the the priest says ganso or shuso. I, I put shuso here. In Japan, some places say ganso and some places say shuso. Um, so I did this in in Kyoto, so I think it became shuso because. Um, I can't remember which side. Tokyo has one style and Kyoto has another style. Um, so, Ganso Daishi or Shu So Daishi, Honen Shonin Goyui Kun. So, Honen Shonin's will or testament. And then, Ichimai Kishomon is the title. So, Ichimai Kishomon, and then there's clap. And then everybody follows Morokoshi Wangacho. That, so, the title part, the priest reads, and then clap, and then morokoshi, everybody follows. Okay? So, in order to save time, we'll, we'll, we'll go back to uh, page, um, page 24. So now, we're going to um, the Shoyakumon, and... So, if you don't have a fusegane, then you use the uh, the fish drum. But in temples that have the fusegane, um, from here they use. And then everybody. First, Namo Amidabu, the, the priest. No, no. And then everybody joins in. The first three, or first? The first three? Sorry. Namo Amidabu, Namo Amidabu, Namo Amidabu is a priest, and then everybody else joins in. Okay, um, thank you, John. 
And then, uh, then we have the Egon. And again, I have to apologize because the uh, I'm, somehow the page numbers got kind of changed around, and um, and we have uh, sorry pages. It's not pages 74 to 79, but it's 62 to 67. I'm going to work with the designer to come up with uh, little stickers so that we can cover up the uh, mistakes. Um, so if you want to follow along page 62. <laughs> And then, so John was trying to do it the fast way where you do nembutsu at the end when you say mata nengawakura and then he just sort of goes through them all and only at the end does everybody say nembutsu together. So if you hear mata nengawakura, that's your key, or that's your uh, no, uh, cue to not say nembutsu together. But if you hear kacha, then, so can you just do that last line and then do kacha? Namo. So everybody says Namo Amidabutsu together. Uh, it, right? Was that part, is that clear? Is that okay? Um, and then, page 26. <coughs> so the reason why I didn't put this underneath following, I mean, as page 26 is that not all of them are red and not all of them are, uh, not that section is always red in, in, a, um, in some of the temples. So that part was kind of cut out. But um, if, you, if the senseis do read it, they can kind of hopefully guide you to that page. So now we come to So Ekoge. Sorry, I didn't explain it first, but um, this is the same thing as with the bell. Is the minister says the first part, right? Gan nishiku doku, and then everybody else joins in, and then junen, and this comes to the end of the main part. So after you do junen, usually the priest does. Uh, medium, soft, and loud drum. So three drums. My, Imanji. Could you help? Okay, okay we're, uh, I'm gonna wrap up very quickly here. Um, and then I, I won't go through the last part, but after he does the three drums, then it goes back to the bell. And then it's the same thing where he does the first part and then he does the bell again and then everybody reads together. Um, except for San Shorai on page 28, this part everybody um, does together. Thank you, John. <laughs> Sorry. I, I, my, my, I see my, the bishop here saying, <laughs> <laughs> so he's like, okay. So anyhow, the sobutsuge is the same. You ring the bell, and then the the minister says the first part, and then he rings the bell again, and then everybody joins in, and then you close with junin. And in Japan, usually only the efficient again reads this part, but this part in in Hawaii, everybody usually reads together, and sometimes the minister reads it in a sort of softer voice than in the other parts because it's kind of, it's sort of your personal June in here at the end that you close. And um, 
and I, I think we're I, I've taken up more time than I was allotted, so I'm gonna stop here. But if anybody wants to ask any questions, um, um, to ask questions or can, hi, ah, and eh? and um, please, uh, if you have any questions to your senseis, uh, Bishop Hara is saying, um, you know. Please ask your ministers too. So uh, please put your hands together in Gasho. Buddha of great compassion. Please bless and guide us. Together we call your name ten times. Yorai daiji daiji aimin gonen dosho junen. Namu Amida, 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 Namu Amida. Thank you. And thank you, everybody, for uh, your patience and for holding up for such a long. Um, uh, workshop. Thank you, uh, Reverend Hara. Uh, very enlightening. So, for tomorrow's schedule, uh, pick up, hotel pickup is at 7 o'clock. So, please check out. Bring your bags out, and then we'll uh, bring your bags and yourself back here uh, for breakfast. Then we're having a service uh, installation and church service. Uh, one announcement. Uh, Maui folks, uh, if you're leaving at the 2 o'clock flight, uh, yes, tomorrow, uh, apparently it's been canceled. Um, so they, they, call, they just called and they said that they'll switch us to 5 o'clock. Um, but just come come in front just to check with yeah so we can discuss if you're leaving tomorrow at two o'clock thank you